All right, some big update coming in. Hindu Janagruti Samiti has now alleged that Bengaluru's Tipu Sultan Palace has encroached upon temple land. Mohan Gada, spokesperson of the outfit, has now demanded a survey of that land. Well, this is another uh, uh, issue that's been raised by the Hindu groups in Karnataka, saying that the Tipu Sultan Palace in the first place has been built on Hindu land, and he now wants the survey of that land to be done to reclaim that land. Remember the Gyanwapi Mosque where it all started. Uh, certainly the sentiments echo across Hindu uh, groups across the country. Post the Gyanwapi uh, controversy unfolding, we're looking at several demands made by Hindu groups in different parts of the country, including Karnataka now, which is ahead of elections. Barely 11 months of, uh, to elections in Karnataka. And you have Hindu groups now extensively in different parts of Karnataka demanding that they reclaim their lost Hindu heritage. And this is one of the, uh, the, the in Bengaluru, the Tipu Palace, uh, an iconic Tipu Palace, um, which is nothing short of a protected site. Uh, here is the Hindu Janagrati Samiti, who has alleged that this Tipu Palace, Tipu Sultan Palace in Bengaluru, was encroached upon temple land. Mohan Gada, the spokesperson of that outfit, now demanding a survey of this land to reclaim it if uh, indeed it was built over temple land. Let's take a listen at his reaction on that. <laughs> Kote, Venkatavana Devastana, the Jagavagito, Tipu Sultan Kalava de Lido, Atikramana Gide, Astela Kelar Hedo Prakara, Ali, Sanskrita Veda Partisan and Editaito, Hagagi, now Hindu Janaja and Samiti Vadinda, Yeno, Devastana, the Jagavana, Akramagi, Atikramana Madare, Adara, Sarvea Beko. All right, there you have it. Uh, another uh, claim, another demand made by the Hindu group in Karnataka now saying that the Tipu Sultan Palace itself was built over Hindu land and that must be now surveyed. Uh, this is but natural that uh, now you'll have uh, the Hindu groups, hardline groups particularly uh, across the country in Karnataka now as elections coming closer demanding for several places which they believe have been built on either temple land or uh, built on a demolished uh, temple and that this is now time for them to reclaim it, that they want it to be surveyed, they want the truth and the facts to come out. Uh, here's another Hindu group in Karnataka demanding that the tip, iconic Tipu Sultan Palace located in Bengaluru uh, must be surveyed to see if it was indeed built on temple land. Let me cut across to Akshita and Gopal joining us uh, live from the newsroom on this. Akshita, Tipu Palace, an iconic site, maybe a protected site. Uh, here is the Hindu Jagrati, Janagrati Samiti in Karnataka demanding that that uh, Tipu Sultan Palace be surveyed and that it is built on temple land and what next? Where does this end? Where does this stop? This was expected, no surprises. Uh, but the Tipu Sultan Palace, uh, that's quite iconic. Now they want a survey to be done on that. What more are their demands as they listed out? Well, Nabila, going by what the Hindu Janajagrita Samiti has said, I'll just read out for you what they've said with regards to the Tipu Sultan Palace. Now, Mohan Gowda's claim is that the land part of it at least belonged to the Kote Venkata Ramana Swami temple. This is a very popular palace as you mentioned in Bengaluru's Chamraj pit. It's referred to as the Tipu Sultan Summer Palace. Now according to the Hindu Janajagrati Samiti, a part of this land actually belonged to this Venkata Ramana Swami temple and that's why there's a need for a survey. They're claiming that earlier times before Tipu Sultan actually invaded here, the Vedas were recited in this land, in this temple and their allegation is that Tipu Sultan actually uh, usurped some of this temple land and then built his palace it's a very big allegation but as someone i'm sure you know also for someone who's tracked karnataka politics nabila not surprising that with the entire gyanwapi storm that we've been seeing spreading across the country in karnataka it's you know gone a step further where the extremely sensitive topic of tipu sultan has also been added to this entire concoction and it's becoming even more polarized because of that we're already seeing uh, you know claims and demands for a survey in mangaluru there were pujas that were conducted yesterday at that mosque in which they're claiming that remnants of a temple were found. Now they're demanding a survey at Tipu Sultan's summer palace in Bengaluru. Right, Akshita, uh, stay with us. I'm going to quickly cut across to Karthik, who's currently uh, at the site. Uh, Karthik, 
uh, give us an understanding on what exactly is the demand by the Hindu groups and take us to the significance of this Tipu Palace. It's, it's not like it's any sentimental for the Muslims, but it's certainly uh, a, a beautiful site, a beautiful palace that stands right in the heart of Bengaluru city's Chamraj Pet. Uh, it's also a protected site, I believe. It's uh, centuries old. Uh, so at a time like this, Hindu groups asking for a survey on this uh, Tipu Sultan Palace because it was built over temple land. How much water does it really hold? Well, Nabila, as far as uh, the property here is concerned, uh, both the temple and also uh, the palace is currently under the archaeological survey of India and both the, uh, and both the sites are maintained by the uh, site. And as far as this property is concerned, the, 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 uh, the palace is uh, you know an iconic attraction in Bengaluru. And the Hindu Janajagriti Committee has made this allegation saying uh, that the palace uh, you know, has uh, encroached upon some of the temple's land. And uh, it says that some of this land, uh, you know, because the palace is just beside the temple, uh, they claim that uh, the palace had encroached upon the temple's land and there was Veda, uh, you know, there was a Veda Patasala that was in that place. Uh, as far as these allegations are, in, are concerned, uh, the officials are yet to react to this. And uh, the Hindu Janajatri Committee has also demanded that a survey be conducted in this land. Uh, but as far as, this, as far as these allegations were concerned, earlier also the Hindu Janajatri Committee had made some uh, similar claims on other issues as well. But it remains to be seen if, if, if the government will indeed actually go forward and survey the state. But as far as the, the, like the property is concerned, it is currently under the government of India. The Archaeological Survey of India is currently taking care of this two historic sites. And uh, as far as the Tipu Sultan Palace is concerned, it was uh, it was constructed way long ago in 1790s. In the 1790s, during Tipu Sultan's rule as the Mysuru as the Mysuru king. You know, uh, but Karthik, uh, we know this comes in the backdrop of uh, the BJP extensively condemning uh, the Congress Party of uh, of conducting Tipu Jayanti, of endorsing this uh, tyrant. Uh, that's what they claim. While while this, of course, Tipu Sultan also has some kind of sentimental value when it comes to certain uh, Muslim groups. They do celebrate Tipu Sultan. They believe that he has uh, he's done great works for the community. He's uh, he's built several iconic places. Uh, he's also favored extensively he was a very good to the hindus in one part that's one part of the debate on the other the hindu says that he that he forced uh, people into large scale conversions at that point so two debates happening tipu jayanti celebrated in karnataka nowhere else in the country in karnataka tipu jayanti is celebrated uh, so so at a time like this when there is a lot of uh, talk about axing tipu sultan's topics from uh, from karnataka's textbooks here are Hindu groups now growing that, uh, you know, echoing that uh, demand of now trying to desecrate uh, Tipu Sultan Palace as well. Because it's not going to stop it just surveying the land. Once it's surveyed, facts are out, then there will be more appeal uh, to bring it down and, and reclaim the land entirely. All right, Karthik, stay with us. I'm going to cut across to Nasir Hussain, who's a Congress MP, joining us on the phone line on that. Mr. Hussain, here is a, a Hindu group in Karnataka. While there's much talk about Tipu Sultan is being endorsed by the Congress party, you celebrate Tipu Jayanti, there are Tipu chapters in the textbooks in Karnataka. Uh, he, now the Hindu group saying Tipu Sultan, who's a tyrant, has built Tipu Palace on Hindu land in Karnataka, Bengaluru's Chamraj Pet. They wanted to be surveyed. How would you receive this news? Yeah, I would, uh, I would only say that uh, uh, the Prime Minister of the country and the party that is uh, in power in the country uh, uh, should come out with an official statement on all these issues. Because uh, it all started with Gyan Wapi Mas, and now everywhere in the country, you take up uh, Tamil Nadu, you take up Andhra Pradesh, you take, uh, you take up Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, everywhere, these kinds of demands are being made by fringe elements and small groups. Those were actually backed by Bharatiya Janta Party and, and the government that is there in, uh, I mean, the party that is there in power. They should have an official statement on this. What do they want to do with all these kinds of issues that are being raised up? And uh, these demands are never ending. That is the reason why in 1991, the then government and the then parliament came out with this Worship Act that the status quo will be maintained with all the monuments. What they were, how they were, how they were procured, who procured, what was the compensation given, not given and all. So it was all, all this debate was put to rest by one act that is called as Worship Act 1991. Now, if uh, uh, the uh, party that is there in the power wants to deflect uh, uh, the attention of the people of the country from the real issues that are facing the nation, especially the inflation, the rising prices, 
the Galvan crisis, uh, the shortage in food, uh, uh, shortage in food uh, uh, commodities, uh, but no, no jobs, uh, falling GDP, falling economic economic crisis in the country. All these issues, which are the real issues, which the people and the arm army of this country, they want to divert the attention from these issues. So these issues are being raked up. And uh, now, for every structure in the country, you will have some history. Now, the courts in the country probably don't don't have and shouldn't have that kind of time to get into these things. We became a nation, we became a country, a democratic country, we became a democratic state in 1947. I think whatever happened in the past should be put to rest and we shouldn't get into the history. If we start getting into the history, there will be so many claims and so many people have to... Uh, answer and I don't think anybody who has born after 1947 should be should be answering for anything that has happened before 1947. You know, but uh, Mr. Nasir Hussain here, uh, Tipu Sultan is, of course, very sentimental for a large population. On one hand, you have a, a, a huge Muslim population who believe that he was uh, a great ruler at one point. He's done great for the community. And on the other, the uh, Hindus also extensively believe that he uh, was uh, a tyrant. He forced large-scale conversions. And, you know, this man must not be endorsed or celebrated. So Congress has always backed Tipu Jayanti. Would you want to judge Justify this, Nabila. I think uh, the media and especially uh, the channels uh, which you people represent are actually trying to uh, build up a false narrative. It is not the Hindus who feel that uh, Tipu Sultan was a tyrant. It is the BJP only for political purposes feel that Tipu Sultan was a tyrant. This is one. Two. Uh, many people, many you say that only Muslims are sentimental. You go to the uh, old Mysore region and, mm. and the region where people. Yeah, yeah, he was he was uh, called the old. Tiger of Mysore. Yes. Nine, it was the Hindus who gave him the, uh, that title of the Tiger of Mysore, and all the former three chief ministers of Bharatiya Janata Party, Sadanand Gowda, Edwarappa, and Mr. Shetar, all of them have celebrated uh, Tipu Jayanti. You just Google and you show it on. I can show it. Uh, I am on phone, or otherwise I could have showed Google and shown it on your television screen. Mm. They all were sentimental about Tipu. They all celebrated Tipu Jayanti. It was only that because uh, the Congress government made it official, they wanted to oppose everything that the Congress government does. Otherwise, he is not sentimental only to the Muslims. He is sentimental even to the Hindus of that region. You can break any religion, you can call anything. And anyway, see, we are a democratic state now. We are a democratic state. There were Rajas and Maharajas, there were Jahampanas and Padshahs and uh, Padshahs in our country. Who has done what? Why he has done? Why he has watched the battle? Uh, why he has waged a battle or a war with the uh, neighboring states? It's something I think we shouldn't uh, get into. It is the work of only the historians to deal with all these things. I personally believe that every king, every emperor, every Raja Maharaja in this world, not just in our country, was an expansionist. Everyone loved to expand, expand his empire. So in that pursuit, in that pursuit, they invaded the other rajas and maharajas, irrespective of what religion or caste they belong. If you say that Tipu uh, was anti-Hindu, Tipu even attacked the uh, attacked the Adil Shahmamir. Tipu attacked yeah. the Nizam of Hyderabad. He was, when he was actually defeated and killed. It was the Marathas, the British, and the Nizam of Hyderabad who invaded. Patan together. Mm. So let us not uh, let us not build up a binary of Hindus and Muslims around a Raja or a Maharaja and do politics now. Now the politics has to be done on the real issues that is unemployment, that is inflation, rising prices, food for poor people, education for poor masses, security of our country. These are the issues on which we should be debating in this country. Mm. Not, uh, not something of what happened during which Raja said. Then if you start digging history, there are 10,000 stories a different no, Rajas I mean, and Maharajas. Yeah, now, tell sure me, enough, now tell me but, who, but will, we, who will at this point, the temple. At this point, are seeing shrill disagreement uh, by the Hindu groups, uh, saying that Tipu Sultan was a tyrant. But, uh, you know, also while that said, B BJP has also echoed the same sentiments. Uh, very recently, in fact... You had President Ramnath Govind, who praised the 18th century Mysore ruler Tipu Sultan when he, while he came to Karnataka uh, at the assembly. So this uh, also happened. So it, it doesn't appear that there is a strong uh, objection to Tipu Sultan, which is unanimous. It appears that there's a lot of uh, 
a debate uh, around Tipu Sultan and who he was and what kind of ruler he was, etc. And this continues till date. Uh, now Hindu groups demanding that Tipu Sultan's palace has been built on uh, temple land and that must be surely surveyed. And then what next? That's the question here. Thank you very much, Mr. Nasir Hussain, Akshatan Gopal and Karthik joining us on that story.